Welcome. This is the Tennessee end of course practice test number three for algebra one, question number 49. The question says which expression is equivalent to the square root of 25 x to the fourth y to the eighth over the square root of 81 x to the eighth uh, raised all to the third power. Now, the reality in this question is that you can sort of do what's in the parentheses first and then worry about what's uh, on the outside. So the exponent looks very important here, but I would just wait until later to worry about it. So we're going to take the square roots of both the uh, numerator and the denominator first. So I need to take the square root of 25, which I know is 5, do this, then do the square root of 81, and you'll end up getting 9. Now, square root is sort of like raising something to the one-half power. So what I'm going to look at in the relationship between the square root and, say, x to the fourth, so in this situation, is I'm sort of going to multiply 4 times 1 half. Or really, how many groups of squares do I have inside of 4? So I've got 4 times 1 half, which is x to the second power, because you have 1, 2, 3, 4, so two sets. So that's what's able to come sort of out of that square root. So I end up with x to the second power. y works very similarly. y to the eighth, and it's sort of like times one half or divide by two, or how many groups of two are in eight, and in this case uh, the answer is that it's four, so you get y to the fourth. On the bottom, x to the eighth works almost exactly like y to the eighth, so you just end up with x to the fourth as well. Now, I'm going to raise that to the third power, and I'm going to do that uh, individually by term. So 5 to the third power is 125. It's 5 times 5 times 5. Then remember, when you have the sort of uh, raising different components, like I have a variable with an exponent, I'm raising the exponent. If I have a order of operations here, it goes parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, and add, subtract. My math people and I, uh, not my my friends who are math teachers, we have been talking about the idea that it's almost like whatever you do to the number, uh, the exponents are so much better than the numbers that you can only do one operation less. It's like they're just too good to be reached by that operation. So we're raising this to the exponent. So the best we can hope for with those um, exponents that are already there is that we can multiply. It's just one of those things about how they are. So instead of doing 2 to the third power, you want to do 2 times 3. So Whatever you do to the numbers, one less operation can reach the uh, exponent. 4 times 3. And on the bottom, 9 to the third power is 729. And then it's 4 times 3, which is 12. All I need to do now is do any sort of uh, adjustments as far as do I have something on the top and the bottom. And in this case, I do. I have a 12 that's on or an x, I'm sorry, that's on top and the bottom. Well, to me, 12 is bigger than 6. I don't know why I circled this one. Usually my strategy is, if I have that kind of sharing, to uh, pick the one that's bigger and circle it. It reminds me where to keep the variable once I do my uh, final simplification. And as I was saying before, whatever you do to the numbers, you can do one less thing to the exponents. Well, 125 over 729 doesn't reduce, so that's as far down as it goes. But if I divide the numbers, that's what the line means, the best thing I can hope for with the exponents is just to subtract them. So 12 minus 6, which gives me uh, 6 the last time I checked. So 125 over 729, and the 6 stays on the bottom, that's where the circle is, and then I have y to the 12th on top. So my answer to number 49 is D. So that's mathematically a great way to get the answer. Hopefully you think it's a great way too. What happens if you're clueless to how to do it and you get to test day? I'm going to try something to see if it works. This is a very dangerous thing to do in this type of video because I should shut it off and then edit it in later if it does work. But I'm going to do something in a stupid way. What a surprise. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, this equation here, I'm going or the setup in the original problem, I'm going to type it in almost exactly as it's seen and then just see if I can get it to work. I don't know if it'll work or not. We're going to try it anyway. Now. In order to do this, I need to have an x value that's not 0. So I'm going to use the, the x value that's here, the one that's the graphing thing. So I'm going to hit it. It is 0, so I need to graph something. 
3x plus 5 is pretty good. You want to graph something linear. And if you wanted to change what you graphed, you go into the window. Whatever I want x to be, I just make that minimum and maximum, the negative and positive versions of it. 10 is fine. Why isn't it 10 already? It's because it hasn't graphed anything yet. This is a calculator trick, essentially. Now you'll remember that uh, it was supposed to be 10, and it is. You also might think, well, 3 times 10 plus 5 is 35. Well, I found out that the y value that you hit alpha and y on the T84 plus can give you 35. So uh, now I'm going to actually try to type it in as best I can. So I'm going to hit alpha y equals, and then I want to do a square root on top of 25 x to the fourth y to the eighth. And then I want to get out of that. And I want to click down. And then I'm going to do the square root of 81 x to the eighth power. Click out of that. And remember, this is all raised to the third power, so I might leave it like this. I might see if it'll raise it to the third power, that whole thing. But what I'm going to do is be safe this time and just go ahead and uh, type this in and hit enter. And then I'm going to raise it to the third power. It's 5.79 uh, times 10 to the 11th. I'm actually going to write that down somewhere on my page. 5.79 times 10 to the 11th power. That's what e to the 11th means. Now, my answer choice is when I type them in, one of them should give me that number. Like I said, this has no mathematical value to it. I'm, it just, you know, worst case scenario, this is it. 125, I'm going to go straight to the answer I predicted was the answer to see if it matches. Over 12, and 729x to the 6th power. It helps if you raise it to the 6th power. So I hit enter, and you can see it's exactly the same thing. So the answer is D. I'll show you one more to show you it doesn't end up being just anything you type in, and it was just a coincidence that that one worked. Unless it does turn out to be that, and then I would just be proving that you were right. So stick around, because you could either feel good that I was an, a doofus on this video, or I can show you that it actually does work. So either way, you kind of win. There, sheesh. Uh, 729x to the fifth power. I think everything looks right now. And as you can see, it's not the same thing. The numbers aren't big enough. So there it is. Uh, a couple ways you can do that problem. I would suggest the first way. It'll have more value for you as you move on through mathematics. But some people have te test anxiety, and you just need something to go back to when all things fail. And that's one thing that you can go back to.